These are the Chat City interviews from 103.2 Preston FM. And Playlist for Life is a playlist of music for people suffering from dementia and music with memories, so music that they loved and meant something to them. So I'm hoping to talk to Andy in a moment, and Andy on his website is put his own playlist, so his own playlist of music, and uh, at number one, and I'll play some of this whilst I try to talk to uh, Andy, it's Adagio Violin Concerto number no. 5 in A major by Mozart, and I will try to get Andy on the phone. Uh, there we are, the Mozart Violin Concerto Number no. 5 in A Major, and that's a recording by the Colburn Academy. And uh, number one on Andy's playlist, and Andy is Andy Lowndes, a practitioner and trainer, uh, who is a nurse and academic, and he has worked in mental health care for more than 30 years, specialising in the last 15 years in the care of people with dementia in both the NHS and the independent sector. So, Andy, a very good morning morning to you good morning good morning and and lovely to speak to you we were supporting uh, at Preston FM a few weeks ago dementia awareness week and during the week I I spoke to many people many practitioners people who are supporting people through dementia and I must admit I personally learned so much during that week even down to um, you know the structures of building and uh, you know the layouts of building etc and one of the things I was fascinated about is playlist for life maybe yes. maybe you could tell us a little about playlist for life uh, what it is and uh, how it came into being Yes, certainly, Huey. I'm uh, glad to. Playlist for Life is a, is a fairly new charity, which was formed really just over a year ago. We just had our first birthday, and it was um, formed really after the experiences of Sally Magnuson, whose mother lived with dementia. And uh, after her mother, Mamie, died in 2012, Sally recognised that music was one thing that kept their mother with them throughout her mother's journey with dementia, and so began to explore the the, the use of personalised music and you know very specific pieces of music that have punctuated our lives and had great meaning throughout our lives. And and as you and I have favourite music, you've just played one of my <laughs> playlist pieces. Um, as we have a playlist of our life, so too does the person living with dementia. And if we're able to, to allow that person to hear their music, it, it raises all sorts of emotions with them that connect them to some of the autobiographical memories in their life. So that's what we are about, is getting the message out there that there is some human work that we can do with people living with dementia and their families to enable them to connect again. And if if I understand correctly, the music is music. It, it's not music that maybe they uh, that other people associate with that person. It is actually the person suffering from dementia and the personal music, isn't it? That it's music that meant something to them. Indeed, that's right. If we can drill down really to the very specific pieces of music, so the the lullabies that were sung to them or they sang to their children, the nursery rhymes that they played in the playground with, the music of their adolescence and, and later lives, if we can find those very specific pieces of music that have memories attached to them, then by uh, playing that music to the person living with dementia, what we have seen is the person being able to connect again with some of those memories, memories that many people would have thought were gone and lost. And that enables families and people living together to, to, to engage again when, when perhaps the person doesn't remember um, the, the, the events of the previous day or, or, or earlier in that day, but can recall the memories of their past and connect again back to their loved ones, as I said. I, I mean, th this is this is absolutely fascinating because 
it, it, it can also bring you close to the person that you're looking after or the person within the family who's suffering from dementia just maybe by sitting down and exploring the music throughout their lifetime and talking about the relevance of the music to them. Indeed, and, and what I would do to, 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 to encourage you to learn more about this is to actually develop your own playlist because that what happens then is that you begin to talk to those people around you about the events of your life and the memories of your life. And remarkably, what we've seen, as I say, is that when we do this with the person with the dementia and their families, that they actually begin to communicate about those things that create the sense of identity, the sense of safeness, of home, of belonging again, which, which has been remarkable. And is this now being used? I mean, is is the research developing and and uh, and? And I can't think of the word there, but the research is developing and taking into account now the impact that this is having on dementia sufferers, is it? Do we do we actually know that it does make a difference? Well, yes, I mean, the research has, has been happening for some years now, um, but what it's usually about is the effect of music on people with dementia, but not so much research has been done on very personalised music. But part of the, 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 the charity Playlist for Life is, is dedicating itself to developing that research and supporting that, the, the research around that. Some of the work has been done in, in America, where really I think this idea started with, uh, with a, an organization called Music and Memory. But in, in the United States and in, in Canada, now they're, they're doing some groundbreaking research that we hope to, to, to use and not actually develop on here um, with Playlists for Life. But the, the actual impact that we've seen it having on people, the testimonials and the anecdotal evidence that the scientists would call anecdotal evidence is very, very con compelling. And, um, and we've seen numerous examples of how this has brightened the lives and connected people again. And, and we've had such interest now from the NHS uh, who are looking at this as a way of en enhancing their person-centred care agendas, which has been remarkable as well, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask about that because, as I said, during that week uh, of Dementia Awareness Week, just sitting in this studio and talking to so many different people, I mean, I discovered uh, the issues to do with the architecture, the layout of the buildings, the colours, the wallpaper etc now the music so within within accommodation maybe nhs or privately so much apparently it appears can be done to make the life of a dementia sufferer so much easier yes indeed i mean i think one of the the, the things we need to remember is that currently there are only really four drugs that have a and a, a limited effectiveness, really, for, for some people uh, living with dementia that are useful. Um, so really, essentially, the care of and support of people living with dementia and their families is about that human contact, that human intervention. And Playlist for Life is one of those, but, but it, we, we think it's an exciting opportunity to really explore the person-centeredness of the care of people living with dementia. And, but you're absolutely right, the, 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 the design features that are happening now, and particularly um, not too far from me here at the University of Stirling, they have the Iris Murdoch Centre, which is really doing some groundbreaking work on design and the environment for people living with dementia and their families and, and coming up with some fantastic, albeit quite simple ideas, you would think, but, but ideas that often we, we, we don't utilised because they seem so simple. Mm. And uh, I see, Andy, that you have particular interest in uh, the use of reminiscence and cognitive stimulation therapy. So when we talk about dementia, what do you feel are the challenges ahead and hopefully the goals that we're beginning to achieve? Well, I think some of the, the key challenges, obviously, the demographics. Where we have one in three people um, are, are going to be living with dementia, and that because we're living longer, the population is growing, and age is the biggest predictor for for um, developing a dementia. So that's, I think, the biggest challenge. The, the, the challenges of science are astronomical. Um, I, I heard Professor Frank Gunn Moore speaking a couple of weeks ago who spoke and said that £23 billion might begin to make a big impact on the science and of dementia. 
So that's that's a huge challenge. But some of the things that we're seeing are, are very, very positive. And that I think particularly it's around the development of person-centred um, interventions and approaches, actually not treating people with dementia as a, as a group en masse, but actually looking at the individual and their lives and their experiences. And then that gives us some hints as to how we can begin to look after people more effectively and more sensitively. So I, I think that's where... Uh, nursing and other um, care organisations and agencies are, are, are going to be focusing over the next few years in particular. Mm. Well, Andy, can I thank you? Uh, I've been wanting to do this interview for a few weeks now, so I'd like to thank you for taking time out this morning to talk to me. And uh, the piece of music, Adagio Violin Concerto Number no. 5 in A Major, I mean, I love music, I live for music. And I understand this was one of your father's favourites and that it reminds you of him, which again takes us back to the importance that music plays in our life. Yes, indeed. You, you, I'm afraid you got me at the start, at the start of the interview with a bit of a lump in my throat because, yes, this is something that uh, very, very um, uh, real and real brings my dad back to me, my memory. And I lost my dad many years ago now, but um, this song, a uh, piece of music, rather reminds me very much of him. It's one of his favourites. So thank you for that. Right. Well, I'm uh, going to play out with it now. So a uh, big thank you for taking part in the programme this morning and hopefully maybe we will have time to talk again in the future. Yes, thank you very much, Huey. Thank you to thank your you. audience too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. We hope you've enjoyed the interviews as much as we have. Why not give us a tweet at Chat City PFM.